Hi team, we're looking at Specialist Maths 2009, Exam 1 question. This question we're going to do all by our si ourselves, no cas. A mass has an acceleration given by that function, v squared minus 3, v is velocity of some mass when it has a displacement of x meters from the origin. So let's go ahead and find v in terms of t, some function of v as a function of, of x. Um, and we've got some initial condition there, right there, which we'll draw on to work out our integration constant c. So let's go about and see what happens. First, we're going to set up our differential equation using a in this form, okay, v times dv dx. Now that's a useful form to use. Why do we use that one? Well, it's because in our information we've got our initial condition in terms of v and x, and our function for for acceleration is in terms of v. There is no t variable, so there's no need to introduce it. Okay, now. Keep going. We rearrange our differential equation. Okay, bringing all the v's to the left hand side and the x's to the right hand side. And then we integrate on both sides. Okay, now what we have to do there, before we continue on with the red, we have to make sure we have on this line, um, I've gone ahead and put a 2 in the numerator and I've balanced that out with a half out the front. Why did I do that? Well, if I look at the integral, this one here, I have a some quadratic in the denominator and a linear in your numerator. And so, I remember it as something about that form. It's is like the derivative o over the function. And that is an important integral rule that gives me log of the function of x. Okay? So I'm going to draw on that information to integrate the left-hand side. So off I go. Integrate left-hand side. Modulus of v squared minus 3 gives us... Um, my integral and I must include my C parameter which I'm interested in working out so I'm going to rearrange the equation to get C by itself and then let's take our initial condition let's sub it in into the equation and let's solve for C C gives us just one why does C give us one well what do we know about log of one Log of 1 is a value of 0. So if all that there is 0, then we just get c is equal to 1. Okay, let's state our function of x in terms of v. And now we have to transpose for v in terms of x. So off we go. We're going to first do the first part. Now this bit here, what did I do? I, I subtracted 1 on both sides and then I multiplied by 2 to end up with this expression. Then I take the exponential of both sides, okay, to undo the log and end up with uh, e to the 2x take 2. Take out a factor of 2 and uh, here, we'll factorize a little bit and I've added 3 there. Then I'm ready to do a square root. And I have to remember to have a positive and negative Okay, but hang on, that's kind of like two functions. I really just need one function, one unique solution. So which one's it going to be, positive version or the negative version? Well, coming back to the initial condition, look here, this is a little information telling us that v has to equal to negative 2 when x is 1. So considering the initial condition, we must have v is the negative version of that square root. Okay. All right. So, very important. And 
something that we have to consider Oop. very carefully when we're doing that. All right, next question. Make sure you um, pause at the appropriate times to be able to work on this carefully. All right, now question 10 gets us. We've got some function here, um, inverse sine function, and we have to, what is the domain and range? So the domain and range for basic inverse sine is stated on the formula sheet. It's important to look that up. Imply rate domain for just the inverse, basic inverse sine of x goes from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so that's the starting point. Now, the argument of the arc sine function, which is this part, the half x plus 1, well, that has an implied domain of negative 1 to 1. Okay, so we set that up like so. And now let's start to um, tr solve this just for x. Okay, so um, he got a half x minus a plus 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 both sides like so, to both parts of the equation to eliminate this part here, to get that. Next part, I want to multiply by 2 on both sides to just get x by itself. So multiplying by 2 on both sides like that, and I end up with this as my domain, my implied domain. Okay. And you might be worthwhile to finish that off by writing um, something along the lines of x goes from negative 4 to 0. Oh, 0. There we go. And now, having found that, let's go get our implied range. Applied range for the inverse sine of x ranges from, there we go, implied range is negative pi on 2 to pi on 2. Okay, they're the corresponding values from negative 1 to 1. So, having a look at the function, if this part here, the arc sine, goes from negative pi on 2 to pi, positive pi on 2, but then the function is multiplied by this amplitude, 2 over pi, and then subtracted 3. So I got to do those two operations to my minimum number in the range and the maximum number in the range. Like this. Get the idea? Okay. Now let's just simplify that up and we get a range of negative 4 to negative 2. Okay. And that's our value. Very nice. Part B says, let's go ahead and find the derivative of that and express our answer in this form. So, off we go. Let's differentiate our function of x. Write that out. Now, I need to first see, well, there we go. I'm drawing on the rule for the derivative of the inverse sine. Okay. Now, that is, comes from this rule, which is on your formula sheet. Okay, that's your basic rule for the derivative of an inverse sine function. And by substituting the, the parts in the right spot, I get the right rule. And now expand the denominator and simplify. And let's take out the factor of negative x because that is the, the type of form we are after. See, there's the factor of net x there. And we get that as our final expression. And that's in the right form, okay, as stated from the question. So a must have a value of 2, and b is a negative 1, and c is a 4. Okay, well, there you go, guys. I hope that's helpful, and uh, all the best for your exam.